us. We're gonna go do some jigging in some deeper water. Don't typically get to do this, and we have a short window to get out. So y'all, this is Steve with Mammoth Saltwater Fishing. I can't wait to share this experience, see if we can bring home some fish to eat. Sit back, relax, enjoy some of this B-roll of the boat ride, and I will see y'all when we hit 37 miles. I have six more miles to my destination, but we're come to the, where the drop off, it goes from like a hundred foot, pretty quick drop off to 200 and past that. I'm gonna set out this Nomad Mad Max because you never know what's lurking around this time of year. It could be Wahoo, Mahi. We're gonna set this out on my little Siegler. Just kind of troll this to our fishing spot. It's right on the end of my crop watch. I have that clicker set. Pretty water out here though. Yo, I just found a floating pallet. I'm gonna throw this nomad lure around. Maybe there'll be some dolphin or something on it. You really never know. Let's try it. Here we go. That's awesome. Man, there ain't nothing under here. It doesn't even have any grass growing on it. It must have recently just fell in. Man, the water is beautiful out here. All right, let's keep on moving to our spot. Look at that. It's almost blue water out here. I mean, almost. So we just hit 307 feet deep. And you can see all this natural bottom. This is that relief shading chart for the Garmin. And that's what we're gonna fish. We're just gonna jig all this natural bottom in 300 foot deep. So I'm gonna take my slow pitch set up. This is my Daiwa Lexa 300 with PE4 jigging braid on a Star Plasma 2 medium heavy slow pitch. I use this rod a lot. It looks like your conventional bass fishing gear, but it's way different. It's much more heavy duty. Now I am throwing a Nomad 180 gram Buffalo jig. This is a slow pitch jig with a single BKK hook on there. A loop knot to my 50 pound mono leader and then i have connected about eight foot of that leader with an fg knot to my main braid well, i'm finally getting some real good marks so i actually dropped the trolling motor down just to sit on top of this spot oh there's a hit Let's see if it'll do that again fish on mm. wow now I get to reel this thing up 200 feet. Let's hope it's something we can keep. Uh, this will be my first fish on the slow pitch beyond 180 feet. So we're gonna bring this joker up, find out real quick <laughs> once it comes up. Uh, it's way down there. What are you? What is that? Is it? Yeah, it is a grouper. Heck yeah. It's a scamp grouper. They only have to be 16 inches. Yeah. <laughs> but they come from so deep, their eyes bulge out. Let's hope he's a keeper. Oh yeah, he is. Really nice keeper scamp. I'm excited about that. Y'all, that thing just spit up uh, some sort of small snapper. Check that out. And then a, another small fish. But y'all, this is my first scamp grouper on a solo trip offshore by myself. It's 40 miles. I don't recommend anybody just do this, but my first scamp ever. I've eaten them before, but I've never caught one. And on the jig, like I didn't bring any bait with me. That is amazing. <laughs> and they do have different season openings and closings you got to pay attention to. These are open right now, and we're alive four of them. So I'm gonna drop that jig back down and see if we can get some more. These are one of the most finest eating fish that you can catch. They come from so deep, the pressure down there is super, super high pressure. And so when you do bring them up, their eyes bulge out, their stomachs bulge out. This is a pure example of barotrauma. If he was too small, we would have to use a descending device or vent tool or both to get them back down. But let's throw him on ice and get another one. Man, I love when a plan comes together because the Lord knows it doesn't always. Like I said, this one's a 180 gram. It's a little light for this type of fishing, but it is working pretty good so far. Let's make another drop and see what else we'll pull up. When you're referring to a pitch, 
dealing with slow pitch jigging. It's actually a turn of the reel handle. That is a pitch. This is a very fun way of fishing and it can be extremely productive as well. So there we go. So see, one pitch, two pitch. Now I don't claim to be an expert when it comes to slow pitch jigging, but I do enjoy it. It's fun. There's really no wrong way of doing anything as long as it works for you. And we caught fish so far. And on this slow pitch, you actually reel on the upstroke. Because if you reel on the downstroke, you're gonna collect all your slack and that jig's not gonna fall like it's supposed to. These jigs are very wide and have a lot of action on the fall. Fish on. It's the second fish of the day. Uh, let's hope it's a, another something we can keep. So we're gonna get it closer to the boat and see what it is. It's a foul hook. Not quite for sure what it is. I'll admit, I'm not for sure. I don't fish it up. I don't think I've caught one. It's probably just a simple bait fish. But it looks pretty cool. I bet that sucker would be grouper candy. But I did not bring a bottom rod to fish bait. So we'll let that one go. Got a while to go. But he's going down there pretty good. All right, here we go again. I didn't think it was a grouper. It wasn't heavy enough. Mm. Fish on. I switched to a little bit heavier jig just to mitigate that current. Same color though, that blue sardine. What are you? Here's my top shot. And it is a beeliner. They have to be 10 inches long. This one, I don't think is gonna make it. But let me see, cause he's in pretty bad shape. No, I'm sorry beeliner. He gone, he backed down. That would have been a nice keeper if uh, it was bigger. Put on a different jig. This one's just a 200 gram Nomad Ridgeback. A little bit different shape, but the same color. It just falls a lot faster in this current. And you can still use it as a slow pitch jig, but you just kind of work it a little bit sharper twitches. Here we go. Back down on the bottom. Oh. Man, I think I... Dang it, I have the bottom. <laughs> the bottom fight's pretty hard. Don't want to lose my jig, but it might be a goner. <clears throat> well, lost my first jig. All right, y'all, it's time for me to go. It's five on the dot. I want to get back before it gets too dark. I don't mind running in the dark, but I just want to get back a little closer because all the other boats around me have left too. So at least I have one scamp and the bite was slow, but I am extremely happy that I got my first scamp on deck on my own boat. And we'll continue this fishing journey, doing some more jigging once I can get out and be a little calmer. So for me, I don't know if it's gonna be in a day or two, but for y'all, it'll be in just a second. Yo, I'm back out again the next day because I wanted to come back and get some redemption on some jigs. Not nearly as far as I was out yesterday. Whole different sea conditions today. It's pretty choppy. Cameras never do it justice as always, but got some steady white caps. Every now and then we get a two and three. Woo! <laughs> like that. But we're gonna try to get us a trigger fish or whatever may bite our jig. So let's go ahead and get back to fishing. The first thing I wanna drop is light tackle. I'm gonna drop this little three quarter ounce banana jig or goofy jig is what you want to call it. It's mainly for pompano, but you can catch a lot of stuff on this thing. And this is on my light tackle star rod with the Daiwa Saltist and 15 pound braid. That's a 2,500 size reel and a seven foot medium heavy rod. Let's go ahead, drop this jig down. This is actually one of my favorite ways of fishing out here is light tackle jigging. Now I'm marking a bunch of huge marks, big old marks there. Most of those are probably jacks. Once that jig's down on the bottom, I just give it real sharp twitches, just like this. Let it fall back down again. I mean, short and sharp. Oh, see, and just like that, they absolutely love it. Ooh, that's a little bit better fish. Mm. I mean, they love this jig, I'm telling you. <laughs> and it's fun to catch these fish on these little inshore rods. Mm. until they do that. Mm. Yeah, until they do that on you. Ah, broke me off. I'm betting that was a jack. Ah, let's tie up again. Got another jig on. Jig's back down. 
Mm. Get you up. Mm. Ah. Got to pull them away from that structure quick. Otherwise, you'll just get broken off. Mm. Come on. <laughs> and it's 75 foot of water here. So they got a little bit to come up, but nothing too crazy. Oh, man. Can't keep it. That's a red snapper. You see me catch these a lot. They're out of season. The season doesn't open up until May 26th, but that's a pretty fish and jig right there in that corner of that mouth. We gotta let him go. Luckily, he's not swole up or anything. So he can go right back down without needing a vent tool or a descending device. Not the target species, but that was a pretty fish. Let's get this jig back down again. Mm. Mm. Another fish. It's coming up nice and easy, so I guess we'll find out what this is going to be. Hopefully something that can go in the cooler. Oh, that's neat. Wow, what a pretty grouper. That's a beautiful grouper. Unfortunately, this one isn't a keeper. It's a pretty grouper right there. Check out the colors on them. Wow. They like that jig. They love the teaser. See, they'll eat the teaser majority of the time. But this fish has to go back and get bigger. What a gorgeous, gorgeous fish. That is awesome. Bigger bud. And he gone. <laughs> wow, that's cool. So all I'm running this on is some 20 pound fluorocarbon leader with a loop knot so that teaser can freely float around. It makes a big difference. And then coming up about a foot, have on a black barrel swivel just to prevent line twist. You will get broken off if you get some real big fish on there, but this is a great way to have fun and still be pretty productive. And they're fairly cheap too. There you are. Another fish. It'd be nice if it was a porgy or something else I could take home. <sighs> Let's see. No. Oh, yeah, it is. I was discouraged for a second. That's a big bee liner. I can keep him. Yeah. Y'all, for some reason, I was thinking this was a red snapper coming up. But that is a nice bee liner, aka Vermilion Snapper, Mingos. These are delicious. You can keep them year round and they only have to be 10 inches long. That's a perfect fish right there. We're gonna throw this one in the cooler. I'm happy about that. That made the day. On the little Pompano jig. It's not just for Pompano. And this isn't a sponsored video. Buy these or none of that. I buy this stuff with my own money, but I absolutely love using these things. Let's get it back down. Now, on a kind of windy day like this, and 75 foot of water. I love that three quarter ounce. You can even use it all the way out to 100. If you get some more current or deeper water, I'll probably go up to a one. Mm. Another fish. It's coming up fairly easy. That's what I like. Because <laughs> it might be something we can keep here. Oh wow, another grouper. No, these things are so cool. They're just undersized. That's the only problem. So I can't keep them. But check that out. That's a gorgeous little grouper. You got to go back, buddy. He's got a bunch of squid and minnows in his mouth. There you go, man. Let him get bigger. Maybe we'll come back and catch him. That's really cool. Them grouper, I, I think grouper tastes the best. And they have probably in my opinion, the prettiest pattern on them. Wow, there's some serious rollers today. Or swells. Putting in some work, catching some fish. This is incredibly fun. I just do this just to show you if you have a boat like this, or even if you have a big offshore boat, but you don't want to fish a bunch of heavy tackle sometimes, you can come out here with this inshore stuff and still be able to be successful and catch fish. Falls a lot quicker than that uh, little three quarter ounce pump jig does. This one, we're just gonna slow pitch jig. Mm, there we go. <laughs> now we can actually put some heat on them with this setup. Oh yeah. See, these rods are supposed to bend down like this. They have a really 
slow action or parabolic action. See how far down it bends? Your normal fast action rod for throwing lures is probably break like that. It's not designed for it. And then if you noticed, the guides are actually twisted. It's done like that on purpose. What do we have here? Oh, okay. Another species, but we can't keep it. That's a beautiful little amberjack. Hardest fighting fish out here, in my opinion. There you go. Those are beautiful, but he's undersized and out of season. This year, I don't think there's going to be a season until the fall, if I read that correctly. But see, these guides are twisted around. That's called spiral wrap. They're like that on purpose. It puts a lot less stress on the guides. And then also, since this rod does bend over like crazy, spiral wrapping prevents your line from ever touching that blank, which you don't ever want in any rod. Mm, there he is again. Mm. This is on that Vertrex vibe. Let's hope it's something we can keep. I've been weeding through a lot of red snapper, so it'd be nice to get something we can get. Another grouper. That is cool. There must be a lot of these down there. Beautiful fish, man. I love these things. Unfortunately, <laughs> he's too small and we can't keep him. Man, they are pretty. Where's your bigger buddy? That's fun catching those. Those are those are awesome. Well, it's time to pull out the old fish bites, fishing strips. Put on a small piece on a little knocker jig. Just have a one ounce egg weight coming straight down to a 3-0 Mustad circle hook. Hook a fish bites like that. Let's drop it down. All right, some fish just ate this piece of fish bites. And reel it in find out what i would love to have some sand perch too but this is still fun on light tackle trigger fish okay well there's another target species he's not a keeper but at least that is a pretty neat fish look at that gray trigger fish these are in season so if i get a keeper obviously he'll go in the cooler Let's see if there is one down there y'all it's slow fishing and it got rough. It's time to head back while I still have some uh, time left in the day to clean up those fish. We got a scamp grouper and a vermilion snapper to go clean up. So I'll see y'all at the cleaning table. We are back home. That was a very rough ride back, but I did manage another fish to complement our scamp grouper here. These are two very, very good eating fish. I mean, some of the best right here, beeliner and grouper. And we have not done a grouper catch and cook on the channel. I think this one we're actually going to take to a restaurant and let them cook it up. We're just going to fillet these up just like you would anything else. But we're going to take our time, make sure that we don't miss any meat. Now you can see where he came from such deep water, you know, 280 to 300 foot deep, his eyes start poking out. That's called barotrauma. Their stomach blows up and their eyes blow out. Before we get in and clean this, I just want to mention real quick, I do have some Bama Saltwater merch on a Spreadshirt shop. It's a YouTube third party site where you can order my logo on your shirts and different products. I'm wearing the green t-shirt right now with the Bama Saltwater Round logo. It'll be linked down below. I know a lot of y'all's been asking about merch and we finally have some out. Let's get in and clean this fish. I'm gonna start on this grouper. So anytime I'm cleaning a fish, I wanna feel where that head meat is. So it's soft right here. It's very hard right here. See if you can hear that. Very hard. So we're gonna work our way around this head meat because you do not want to miss any meat on such a great fish like this. And this is something I don't get to do often is go out and catch these. At least not in my bay boat, but wow, look how white that meat is. That is amazing. Now we're gonna open up the back here. Like I said, I'm taking my time with it. Get out there, Ben. I meet where our first cut was. There we go. And we're just gonna run this knife along their bone. Wow, what a good looking piece of meat that's gonna be. Go up over that center bone. 
and make sure to come back down. And now I like to flay through that rib cage. Only fish you really can't cut through the rib cage with a regular knife is like a sheep's head or a trigger fish. They have such a thick rib cage. But now we can finish that off. Boom, there we go. Look at that. I took my time on that and didn't miss hardly any meat right there. Now we can leave the skin attached if you want. It just gives you something to hold on to. I know some of y'all mentioned that in some videos before. I used to do that all the time, but then I got a little bit better at skinning it. But I am gonna take a little bit longer knife. This is a nine inch, just so we can lay it a lot flatter and get that meat off. It's not a giant grouper, but it is a nice 20 inch grouper. Beautiful fish. Look at that. No missed meat on that skin. Hardly any on this fish. And I'll have a gorgeous slab of grouper. I mean, that is amazing. So there are throats too, and then grouper cheeks, which if you get a much larger grouper, they have much more bigger cheeks. This one, there's hardly anything there, so I'm not really gonna mess with it. But I am gonna take this throat out when I, after I do the other side. So let me finish this other side real quick. So I finished that other side, and those are two absolutely fresh and gorgeous grouper fillets. So the last thing I wanna do, which you can actually do this on pretty much any fish really redfish is good snapper's good groupers especially good but we're going to take this collar or throat out and a lot of times shears can help but we'll just take our knife and i kind of pinch under this gills just like that make a little opening and i'll take that knife cut that off and then you can kind of separate it from the head and then obviously dress it up a little bit but now you have a gorgeous grouper collar right there i mean these are a meal on their own you clean that up a little bit get some of that stomach lining off and i've done a catch and cook with a big snapper throat once you try it you will be like why have i been throwing those back but if you know you know so we'll save that one as well this is our vermilion snapper or bee liner. These things are gorgeous, I think. They got such a deep red look to them. They taste amazing. And the cool thing about them is there's no open or closed season. So you, if you go out there, spend the gas and time and money, you can go out and catch these and keep them, unlike the red snapper. But let's go ahead and fillet this joker up. They're very easy to fillet, just like anything else. Cut behind that pectoral, just get through their scales. There we go. I like to flip my knife around and run it right down that dorsal. Just like that. And now you can fillet right off the skeleton here. And I use my thumb, you know, out of the way of my blade. I make sure when I put pressure on it, it's away from my thumb. But I just kind of pull the fillet back. And that puts some tension on that and then your knife will go through real easy. So, and then you can poke through. There we go. Let's get this rib cage. Go right through it so you don't get miss that stomach meat. And we have a really nice bee liner fillet. But cut it all the way off. Just take your fingers, kind of put some pressure on it. And now you can do one solid motion or two or three. <laughs> and you have a nice cleaned up bee liner. But let me finish cleaning up this bee liner and we are gonna take these to Oso, which is where I had my mahi mahi cooked because they do such a phenomenal job and we'll see at the restaurant. Well, we're about to arrive to Oso. Y'all see me if you watch the mahi video, I came here and did a catch and cook. I do not get paid to come here. They don't pay me at all, but their food is amazing. And so we have mom here with me and then we've got our fish and some ice and in bags and all you do is go in get your table and then tell your server or waiter that you're going to do the catch and cook so we're going to find a parking space and get in there we're going to take our 
fish and go get a table. Here we go, we're gonna go in. Hopefully I don't get copyrighted by the music, so I'm gonna do short uh, videos here, but we're gonna do the catch and cook. Beautiful out here in the marina. We chose to sit outside. This is Bear Point Marina. Y'all, we chose fried because how can you not like fried grouper, but good gracious, look what they did. That is a awesome plate of food we decided to go with some fries coleslaw there's our grouper and there's our bee liner there you want to take you a piece of grouper i'll let mom do the honors on the grouper let me know what you think <laughs> it's hard to beat in it it's camp grouper oh my god that's awesome i'm fixing pig out all right i think we <laughs> i think we are too we got some coleslaw and fries too see last time we did our mahi grilled and blackened so i wanted to change it up a little bit and go back to fried because how can you beat that okay that just moved to the very top of my list of delicious fifty. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anything else can top that. That is a very good eating fish. I'm happy about that. I will definitely be going and getting after some more. Hopefully we get some calm days and, uh, and go back out and catch some. Mm. Mm -hmm. That was pretty good, huh? Yeah, that was delicious. <laughs> we brought cool. some. We're bringing some to my brother. He's at work, so when he gets off, he'll be able to try some of the scamp grouper. I absolutely love the scamp grouper. Anything with the word grouper in its name tastes good. And most fish that comes off those reefs tastes delicious. But that scamp was just way on up there. So I'm going to have to say scamp and trigger fish are my two favorite fish to eat of all time. I have to say that because those are good. But uh, nice white flaky meat. Like I said, also don't pay me to come here and do videos. They are nice, their food's delicious, and they have a very cool atmosphere. If you enjoy this catch and restaurant cook, you can go leave a like and comment down below if you wanna see more like this. And if you're not yet subscribed, smash that subscribe button. If you are, you know, I appreciate you as always. So we'll see you on the next Bama Saltwater Fishing video. I wanna thank the good Lord up above for everything he does for us. We'll see you later.